Hey, what's going on internet? In this After Effects video, we're gonna create an awesome space scene animation inside of After Effects. All right, what's up? My name is Josh Noel and I'm from Sunduck Film. In our previous After Effects and Illustrator tutorial, we talked about creating icon animation using Adobe Illustrator and using shape layers inside of After Effects. But in this video, I wanna specifically focus on animating an entire cartoon scene from Illustrator vector files. And before we jump into our tutorial, be sure to follow me on Instagram and you can also chat with me and others on our new Discord. Those links are in the description below. So let's go ahead and jump into our tutorial and start creating this scene. So to get started on our animation, we're gonna work with Adobe Illustrator first. So I have two projects in here that we'll be animating with. So this is gonna be our background and our object scenery. And in our other project, we're going to grab the rocket ship out of this and I want to talk a little bit about vectors and why you don't actually have to create these from scratch and you can get started on your own animation right away. Now there's a handful of resources out there. One of my favorite is freepick.com and this is where I downloaded these project files from and there are literally thousands of free project files for Illustrator, vector files that you can work with in Adobe Illustrator and animate them inside of After Effects. Now of course the only thing with this site is that you have to credit the authors uh, to use it for free. Uh, of course, there's a handful of other sites that I would recommend like and then there's other sites like graphicriver.net where you don't have to credit anyone But you have to have, obviously buy the work Of course, I'll link all these in the description if you want to figure out what resource is best for you But for the illustrator portion of the tutorial I'm gonna show you how to take apart these objects layer them correctly and how to send them over to After Effects So you have pretty much all the control you need over the animation so what we want to do is create a new layer and the new layer buttons right down here in the right corner and here we have two layers Let's go ahead and open up our first layer, which is called background Two. just sometimes the names are not going to be exactly consistent. Uh, so we open this up and we see that there's a layer in here called group and we open that up. We have a ton of different paths and other groups. When you're in a position like this, when there's one big group, just go ahead and select everything by hitting control A on your keyboard or command A on a Mac. Go to object and go to ungroup and boom, everything is going to be in a path by itself or a group. So now, essentially, there's no group that's containing all these elements, it's just a layer. And now it's a lot easier to select multiple objects. So for example, this planet right here has multiple you know, vectors in it. So what we can do is hold down shift on our keyboard and click and we have all these groups selected. Then what we can do is see that, okay, this is selected right here in this group because we have this icon here. Bring this group into layer two. And now this is in its own layer and After Effects is gonna recognize this um, as a own layer inside of After Effects, whereas this will be its own layer. So now we can easily come here and select multiple layers. So hold, shift click, create a new layer and bring in our groups to those layers. And boom, now we have our own separate layer. Sometimes you need to hold down shift to select other types of elements. And then you can just find where they're at inside your you know, layers panel by the ones that are selected. Create a new layer and hold down control on your keyboard and you can select multiple uh, you know, layers at the same time. And one technique that you can employ instead of just dragging everything to the top is when you have a group selected, you can come here to our Illustrator file, right click it, go to your range and bring it to front and automatically be here at the top and it'd be much easier just to drag it into its own layer. So I went ahead and created enough layers for the planets and the asteroids to make sure that I would have enough of layers inside of After Effects to animate with. And that is your primary goal is to grab all the layers that you want to animate with and bring it over to After Effects. It doesn't have to be everything. So let's move over to this other composition. And my goal here was just to drag, you know, a few elements from this as well. So I have control over it. So sometimes all you have to do when you first open a project file is the only thing to do is click it. All right. And then boom, all your layers are right here. And we can come over here, create a new layer and you know find that rocket inside and uh, right click it go to arrange bring to front and drag that in this new layer and then maybe we'll also grab say the satellite and then from here we can just turn off all of our layers except for those two and now we'll want to go ahead and save these uh, project files so so we'll come here go to file save as we'll call this space click okay go over here go to file save as and we'll call this one um We'll call it models. All right. Click OK. All right. Now we'll move over to After Effects because now we're ready to animate. All right. So we'll want to import our two vector files into After Effects. And then we'll come here to our film strip, create a new composition, and we'll make it 1920 by 1080. And we'll call it main. And we'll click OK. 
And then let's go ahead and import both of our Illustrator files into our timeline. And you can see there's just two layers for now. What we can do is select both these layers, right click it, go to create, and click on convert to layered comp. And this will create two compositions with our files in here. And we can go into our, say, our space here. And boom, here's our composition. So what we do here is hit S on keyboard for scale. And we can scale this up, this entire composition. And you see everything is kind of pixelated when we scale it up this far. So we'll go into our space composition. And we'll want to click on this continuously rasterize icon here in the middle. And then we'll go back into our main composition. And we'll want to click it again on the space composition. Now we have complete vector data of our layers. And then, of course, we can go into our models layer. And this time I'll just grab our two, you know, our satellite and our rocket ship, go into our main comp, paste those in there and delete the models layer. So we'll have these individually. And let's just say we'll scale this one up the satellite. We'll put this like right here. Make sure that's a uh, continuously rasterized. Grab our rocket ship because it's going to be our main element. And we'll want to continuously rasterize this. So since we have all this data on our space background here, we can kind of choose how we want to animate this. So what we'll do here is we'll kind of position this to like a frame edge a little bit. So it'll give us more space. We'll hit P on our keyboard for position and we'll add a keyframe for it. We'll move forward to maybe five seconds and we can just reposition our background however we like. So maybe like this. And now we have a moving background like this, which allows us to fully utilize the background and then we go and say our space composition and we can animate specific you know layers here because we have full control so maybe we'll start off with some of the planets on the bottom so so for example just for a quick animation if I want to animate this planet I can just hit S on my keyboard for scale and I can add a keyframe for scale and I can move the keyframe forward in time and then move forward by a little bit and bring the scale down to zero percent and I select both the keyframes and make them easy easy keyframes by hitting F9 on my keyboard and boom, now we have the scale of this planet. And of course, you can do other animations like position animations as well. So perhaps we'll grab this comet here. We'll just hit P on my keyboard and we'll add a keyframe for position. Maybe move this one forward in time and maybe all the way five seconds. And then we can just reposition this, uh, you know, this comet and it can go do that the entire time. And that will create some really cool animation within this entire you know, composition. And with just a little bit of that animation here, we have a little bit of movement going on. And there's not much going on. So let's go ahead and continue to work on this. So, for example, we can grab, say, our satellite layer, just copy it. We'll put it right into our, you know, space background. And we just grab that satellite and reposition it. And we'll scale it down. And we'll kind of have this as a static object, maybe moving a little bit more, you know, slowly. And then we can kind of do a unique positioning animation for it as well. So maybe it's not moving as fast. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about our spaceship, which is our main, you know, hero in the scene, if you will. So what we can do to fully animate this rocket, instead of just doing, you know, singular animations on like one object, we can right click this layer, go to create and click on create shapes from vector layer. And now we have all the outlines inside of this shape layer. And if the colors didn't come in the right way, just find which group that is. So this is group five and you can just hide it if you want and it's completely gone and we have that data there and the reason why you might want to bring a certain layer into shape layers is now we have full control over the entire animation of this rocket so for example you know i can animate the wings to fly onto it but i'm not going to do that in this video because it'd be repetitive but however uh we might want to animate you know the flames outside of our you know rocket ship obviously so we want to find what group those are in so you know perhaps i'll just take off the white here we'll find that this is the flame right here and then we'll make sure that layer is selected which is group 13 in my case go to add and we're going to add a wiggle paths to this and obviously this is a little bit crazy so we'll bring down the size you know maybe down to three or so and perhaps we can increase the detail or lower it just trying to find something that looks realistic for our scene maybe we'll set to smooth and we can also increase the wiggles per second to maybe perhaps nine and that looks cool. And then of course we can just copy the wiggle paths and bring it into group 12 if we have that extra flame right there, which I think fits perfectly. And that looks nice. And now if we want, we can go to our main shape layer here. We hit P on keyboard for position. And we can even, you know, animate the rocket if we want to kind of move upward or since the space scene is animating, perhaps we don't even need the rocket ship to move. But, you know, if you wanted to, this is how you can animate certain objects and we have full control over as much animation as we want. You know, make sure you turn on motion blur for your layers and turn it on at the top. 
and here's currently what we have with our rocket scene and of course we can adjust how fast and how slow we want to speed we can always expand the scene uh, however this is currently you know how it goes and and of course we could do so much animation and we didn't animate all of the planets here and this is a good opportunity for me to demo one of my favorite plugins for After Effects called Animation Composer which has over 1000 motion presets which you can drag and drop to any layer inside of After Effects and it can help you save hours of time especially when you're doing repetitive animation in large projects you can drag and drop a preset and save tons of time let me show you how this works so we have several layers here inside of After Effects from these planets that we did not you know animate and if we want to save a lot of time and get this done really quick I can go to Animation Composer and go to our 2D layer transformations where we have over 1,000 presets. Perhaps I go into like rotate and scale and I can find an animation that I like and I can preview the animation before I apply it. And what's important here is make sure that your layer is selected and drag it and apply it as in. And automatically it will add that animation to your composition and as you see at the top here and within a few seconds we were able to add a animation to this planet and that looks really cool. And then we can always offset the layer if you want. And more importantly, you can select multiple layers here and we can apply the same animation to these layers or you can even apply them as an out animation. Go to more tools, go to transition shifter and we can come here and we can stagger our layers by you know maybe five frames here. And this, and this will automatically offset the animations within just a change of a number and a click. And it looks like we've added a lot more effort to this animation and we did it within just a few seconds. So if you want to learn more about Animation Composer and the 1000 motion presets, you can go ahead and check our links below. So I hope you guys enjoyed this animation tutorial. If you want to learn more about these techniques, you go ahead and check our links in the video description. We created a handful of Illustrator to After Effects tutorials. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We do post two post-production tutorials every single week right here on the channel. You can also hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the video description. And always, be creative.